you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed, Are you washed in the blood? In the blood? Oh, anyway, let's do this now. Everybody get your Bible. Hold up your Bible. And uh, let repeat this with me. It's up on the screen if you don't know it by heart. This is God's Word that I hold in my hand. Upon God's Word, I take my stand. I can have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. I am what it says I am. And I will do what it tells me to do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. If you meant that, give Jesus a praise clap offering. Praise the Lord. Oh, listen to this, listen to this. I, I'm sorry these kind of things happen, but uh, you'll, some, somebody might be able to uh, relate to this to some degree. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> After four years of separation, my wife and I finally divorced amicably. I wanted to date again, but I had no idea how to start. So I decided to look in the personal column of the local newspaper. After reading through all the listings, I circled three that seemed possible in terms of age and interest, but I put off calling them. Two days later, there was a message on my answering machine from my ex-wife. I came over to your house to borrow some tools today, and I saw the ads you circled in the paper. Don't call the one in the second column. It's me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how many of you would want to ever have to start trying that dating routine over again, but it's not going to be me. I don't want to be in that deal. So uh, anyway, this morning I want to talk to you on a message I've entitled Learning from Samuel's Experience. You know, whenever you look into the Word of God, you find out that God le le left us the Old Testament writings uh, as an example. In other words, we can look back at our spiritual forefathers and mothers, and we can look back at their life, and we can learn a lot from people. In fact, if you'll look around your life, much of what you know today, you learned from other people, didn't you? Amen. Certainly you did. We all did. We learned a lot from our school teachers, our parents, grandparents, and brothers and sisters. And, you know, just a lot of people have, have given us information that not only did they learn from, from books, but from their own personal experiences. And so we're going to learn from the personal experiences of, of Brother Samuel here. And I'd like to ask you to turn in your Bible now to 1 Samuel chapter 16. I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 13 this morning. And just want to share a message with you that I pray will be inspirational to each and every one here today. 1 Samuel 16 verse 1 through 13. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil, and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an heifer with thee, and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves, and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons, and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass, when they were come, that he looked on Elab, and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as men seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse said to Shammah, made Shammah to pass by. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Again Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. And Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Let us pray. Father in heaven, 
I am so thankful this morning for the opportunity to stand before your people and deliver this message. I pray, Lord, that it'll be the word of God. It'll bring the insight and inspiration uh, to each and every one here today that you meant for it to be. Lord, I pray that we would all have an open heart and an open mind to receive the word of faith here this morning. Lord, I pray that lives will be touched and lives will be changed. And Lord, may everything is said and done bring glory and honor to you. Let your mighty anointing be upon the reading and hearing of this word, the preaching of this word. And God, I, once again, I pray that you would just help me to be what you want me to be here today in every way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Would you put your hand over your heart, please? And let's say this prayer to our Heavenly Father. Father in heaven, speak to my heart and change my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for saying that prayer with me. I'd like to draw your attention back to verse number one, please, for our first point this morning. The Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil, and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. You know, this is a, an experience that, that, that Samuel is going through that I think we can all relate to. Is grieving. And, and we've all been in a situation of grief, uh, if we've lived very long at all on this earth anyway. And I think that whenever I look at this, there's something that is to be gleaned here that needs to be passed on to each and every one here today uh, to help us to, to understand that God had a plan here. And I would just simply say Samuel allowed his emotions to hinder his ministry. He got just bogged down in this grief. God saw that there was a, a great deal of inactivity in the life of Samuel the prophet. God had a work that needed to be done. And here brother Samuel is, he just bogged down in this grief over the fact that he knew what Saul had been done had cost him the kingship. That God was about to raise up another king. And yet here Samuel is, he's, he's mourning over this. In fact, in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, this is something that needs to be looked at. Speaking about time. A time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. There is a time. that sometimes that this emotion called grief is valid and necessary. It helps us to be able to cope with, with the hurt and the pain of, of, of something that's of, of, of value to us. And so there, there is a time for that. But unfortunately for Samuel, he is letting it go well beyond the time that God thought necessary. And so there has to be something that we look at this and we have to be very honest about it this morning. And I ask you a simple question. Are you allowing some emotion to hinder the ministry of the Lord from operating in your life? Are you allowing the, the death or the divorce or... Or something along that line to cause you to become inactive. That you've just, you just become just almost numb to living. You're just sitting around. i got news for you, child of God. You're not glorifying God sitting there and just letting days and weeks and months and years of your life go by being inactive. Amen. God's a God of activity, ladies and gentlemen. He needs us to realize that this is, this is part of his plan not only for Samuel but for us. There comes a point in time that you've got to hear from God here that it's time to get moving again. It's time to move forward. You can't, you can't let the, the grief that comes with, with loss keep you just bottled up. God's got plans for your life and he needs you to wake up and realize we got to go. There's things I need you to get done. The ministry of the Lord that he is expecting you to fulfill is dependent upon your hearing from God that it's time that you let this grief go, that you move forward with your life. Maybe you're here this morning, and you, this is going to especially hit you because this has been something that's been, been, been just, I mean, sidelining you, and you're just bogged down with grief. But I want you to think about this as well because this, I'm talking about emotion. Emotions are part of us, ladies and gentlemen. We're very, we're, God wired us up to be emotional. Okay, there's not a one of us in here that hadn't shed a tear. There might be some in here that might do them some good to shed a tear. Amen. But the point is, is I think that we need to move beyond just the, the grief aspect of emotion for just a moment. I think that there's, there's such a thing as called depression. Depression is a terrible thing. It's a type of emotion where the people are, are just, you know, they're really, they're really hurting. 
And it's depression that can set in. The pharmaceutical industry is making billions of dollars off of giving people antidepressant drugs. So we have to look at this and realize that what Samuel is coping with in his day is very relevant for us here this morning. There's some of you that have, have, have been sidelined in honoring God with your life because you've given in to these kind of emotions that just kind of got you held up. And you're not, you're not active in doing what God's wanting you to do. But I want you to look at this, if you will. This is found in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 31 and 32. Paul writes here, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. You be honest about this. Go back to that verse 31. I want you to see this. I'm talking about emotions. Emotions that can hinder you from fulfilling or hindering your ministry. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger. I want you to just think about that. Are you mad at anyone this morning? Have you allowed anger to, to, to side you, sideline you from being the, the godly person that God needs you to be? See, Samuel had grief. And grief had sidelined him. But I believe that there are times in, in, in Christians' lives that they're, they're prone to, to just literally shutting down and not fulfilling God's call upon their life because they got hurt by the words or the actions of somebody else. And maybe today is going to be that day that God speaks to your heart. I've got an antidote for that. It's called forgiveness. Or some of you are going to have to really do a, a, a heart check here because I'm telling you, this anger and this, and, and this bitterness, it can ruin you. It can wreck your life. And believe me, you're not doing yourself no favors walking around, carrying around anger and bitterness in you. Whether it is somebody else. In fact, I've, I've been around people that were angry at God. Because they, they didn't understand why things worked out the way they did. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time we get over here and get to this place of where we stop trying to figure things out and faith things out. Amen. That we realize that, you know what, I'm going to trust God no matter what. Amen. I want to ask you once again this morning to consider the ministry of the Lord that may be being neglected in your life because you've been sidelined by some emotion, whether it's grief like Samuel, whether it's anger or bitterness or depression, I don't know where it is in the emotional realm that the devil has maybe worked in and gotten you sidelined. Remember when you used to play in the band? Remember when you used to sing? Remember when you used to preach? Remember when you used to teach? Remember whenever you used to be that, that jovial, happy Christian? Where is that person? Where is that person? Because ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, we've caved into this thing called emotion. And I want to encourage you this morning, child of God, do what the psalmist David did. Sometimes you've got to encourage yourself in the Lord. You've got to get to that place. That you realize that there's something that can be done here. Sometimes it is a matter of forgiving people. Sometimes it may be that you've got to forgive yourself. Because you've, you've missed the mark, you've stumbled and you fell. But child of God, let's not let this self-condemnation, this, this emotion called self-condemnation keep us down and keep us from fulfilling what God wants you to get done. Samuel needed to move forward. God needed him to get up and let's go. I'm, I'm just saying this morning, I believe this is a word that God put in my heart that we got to get up and we got to get to moving. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not let the days of our lives go by and not fulfill what God would have us to fulfill. Secondly, I like the moving on down here to verse number 6 and 7 in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse number 6 and 7. And it came to pass when they were coming that he looked on Elab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as a man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Second thing this morning that we're learning from Samuel's experience is this. Samuel received a word of knowledge to correct a misconception. He had a misconception. When the eldest son of Jesse walked in 
It just blew Brother Samuel away. Now, this man is a prophet of God, ladies and gentlemen. We're not just talking about somebody that's not walking uh, with, with some kind of discernment. We're talking about a prophet of God. And yet he, he, he is one that got a misconception. Whenever he saw this handsome man walk in, man, I mean, immediately he said with himself, surely the Lord's anointing is before him. God had to give Brother Samuel a word of knowledge. Just give him a revelation of knowledge. This is not the man. Because I don't look upon the outwardness of a man as a man does. I look upon the heart. How many of you know God can see your heart? God's looking at your heart, friend. And we need to get a hold of this because I'm talking about a word of knowledge. I think it's important as I look at this, I understand the word misconception is sometimes a little bit over our, our head. But it means an incorrect interpretation or understanding. An incorrect interpretation or understanding is the word misconception. Think about this. That if we would just be sensitive to God, how many times we could have been, we could have avoided the tragedies of life. If we would have just been like Brother Samuel, at least willing to realize that we need to be corrected about a given person. He was sure that Elab was the man that, uh, that, that God wanted to anoint to be king. But God had to give him this word of knowledge to correct this misconception. Can I tell you this morning that God still wants to operate in the gifts? He can work in the gifts of the Spirit. In fact, look if you will in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 7 and 8. Re receive this. This is, this is something that will happen. And, and, and I think that this is, this is such an important thing whenever I look at this and I see this. This is... An, I'm going to turn there right quick, brother. I need you to see this gift. I, I, I think it's important whenever I, I, I look at the gift of the Spirit. This is found in, in 1 Corinthians, I said 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I meant chapter 12, brother David, verse number 7 and 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 and 8. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with them. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit will. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. And there, these are the gifts of the Spirit that are listed here. I bring this to your attention because, child of God, you're not walking through this world by yourself if you're a Christian. God the Holy Spirit can give you revelation knowledge concerning other people. Just like Samuel received a word of knowledge here concerning Elap. This is not the man. I think it's important for us to look back at our life and think, have I ever made a bad choice on a particular individual? Is it possible that we could do that? Listen to what is found. This is also found in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 and 14 is what this is said. And it's talking about false apostles here. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed to an angel of light. Think about this. That sometimes what Paul was writing here is we need to be walking in the Spirit because sometimes people can put on a charade, can't they? He said, even Satan has transformed himself, can transform himself into an angel of light. He looks, he looks the part, looks like a good guy. She looked like a good lady. But God wants you to know that we've got to stop just looking on the outwardness of people and listening to the Spirit of God. God can bring you to some very good people for you to be walking with, child of God. But God can also put the brakes. He can put a check in your spirit. That this is not the person you need to be with. You don't need to let this person do business with you. There's something about this that I pray that you'll get a hold of this morning. Have you ever had to, have you ever had that happen in your life? That God put a check in your spirit about something and then you went ahead and done it? Only to find out afterwards that you really got, so to speak, took advantage of? Amen. It can happen. You teenagers, listen up, young ladies especially. Do you realize that boys will lie to you and tell you everything in the world that you want to hear? But they're after only one thing in their life. Many, many times, all they're trying to do is take advantage of you. 
You got to recognize that it's up to you to say, I have the Holy Spirit in me to help me discern if somebody's trying to take advantage of me or somebody's trying to be a blessing to me. So this morning, whenever I look at this, I just want everybody to realize, Elab, he shows up, Samuel the prophet, he had to receive a word of knowledge from God to correct his misconception. Listen to this. This is found also in this context of Scripture. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15 and 16. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs, figs of, of thistles? Go back to that verse number 15 right there. I want you to see this. It's Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. Ladies and gentlemen, people can dress up. And this is what God was trying to show in, in Samuel's letter, I think, is in, in his life and in his experience. That's, I mean, sometimes you look at people and you want to believe the best. But God says you'll know them by their fruits. I want you to think about the people that you're associating with. And think about this. Is those people that you're associating with, which ones are trying to bring you closer to Christ and which ones are trying to take you away from Christ? Ladies and gentlemen, it's up to you to make some decisions in your life. You see, I came to that place in my life many years ago where I realized that there was a worldly crowd out there that kept trying to drag me back out in the world further and further. I want to tell you right now, you've got to make a discernment in your heart. And sometimes it even comes to that, 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 that place in your life to where that what Jesus was talking about is there are people out there that will take the Bible and twist it and bend it to make it say what they want it to say Amen. to their advantage. And I just simply say that here's the important thing. You've got to become a student of God's Word yourself. You've got to know what's in the Word of God. Do you, I think most of us in this room, we can remember when that guy down in Waco, Texas, David Koresh, Remember what he done? He took he, he wouldn't let anybody have a Bible. He'd tell them what he wanted them to, to know. Boy, I'm telling you, if you ever go to a, a, a Christian meeting and, and the preacher gets up and he says, you ain't going to need your Bible. Don't say. Wait a minute. That's how I'm going to know you telling me what's right. Amen. I'm just thinking that it's important for us to know that this, is, this, is, this can happen. And unfortunately, we've seen it happen in our day and age where people have, have misled people because people of God, just or people that were, were wanting to know about God, they weren't given the book called the Bible. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you to know what's in the pages of this book called the Holy Bible. Somebody say amen. amen. Know this. Well, we find that, that Brother Samuel, he, he had to receive this word of knowledge to correct a misconception. I want to encourage you this morning, before you make business deals, take time to pray. Get God's wisdom about it. Know in your heart. Have that peace in your heart uh, that this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm telling you right now, if, if you're a young person and you're thinking about, you know, uh, entering into a relationship with somebody that, uh, that's going to become personal, I pray that you take time and you pray about God, is this the person you brought into my life? You see, I believe that God can help us in every area of our life, ladies and gentlemen. And it's, it's important for us, to, whether it's in business or whether it's on a personal level, I just believe that God can direct us if we will hear somebody say amen. God loves to speak by His Spirit to His people. All right? Let's move on in closing in verse number 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. It doesn't seem like a very important scripture verse right here, but it really is. It leads us to a great experience in Samuel's life. Samuel comes over and he anoints David. He's just a lad at this time, just a young guy. But he anoints him. And the thing I think is, is so impressive about this is he's anointing him as the king of Israel. At this young age, he's being anointed king of Israel. You know how long it took David to finally get to this place? Fully in, 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 in leadership over all the nation of Israel? It took 20 years. 13 before he got to the kingship, but it was another seven But after that before the whole nation of Israel called him forth and anointed him to be king over Israel. Think about this. 
Because this is important, I believe, in this experience of Samuel. And we looked at this. Samuel completed his mission, but the blessing took years to manifest. Samuel completed his mission by blessing David with this anointing that God had told him to do. But it took years for the manifestation to take place. I want you to think about this because we many times, as, as, as we talk about blessings, we many times, we, we, we get way, way impatient. And we, we seem to think that it must not going to come to pass. I, you know, the Samuel prophet come, he anointed me king, and David went year after year, year after year, and, and it was like nothing happened. I'm not, you know, God says I'm a king. But here he is, he's still out here doing what he's doing. And it would be years and years later before David would see the manifestation of this blessing come to pass. But I believe that David shows us something here. Listen, this is found in the book of Psalms, chapter 40, and verse 1 through 3. David says here of another situation, I waited patiently. Everybody say patiently. But I want you to read the word before that. Waited. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. I'd like for you to consider this this morning. Because I believe it's important for us to recognize that God can do things on his timetable. And there comes an important part of this that you and I get a hold of the blessing of God. I don't think David walked around and said, I don't believe I'm ever going to become a king. I don't believe I'm ever going to come. I believe he trusted God. That this this promise, uh, this anointing, this blessing was his. And so he was waiting patiently. This morning, I want to encourage all of you this morning that are waiting for the manifestation of your blessing to get a hold of it because here's the way it operates. The spirit and the natural, it's kind of like the speed of light is like really, really fast, okay? 186,000 miles per second, something like that. It's crazy fast, all right? But this 186,000 miles per hour speed of light... It's like you, whenever you get a hold of a promise of God in your heart, maybe for healing, what you got to realize is, is the Spirit goes, reaches out. How many of you know every good and perfect gift cometh down from above? Man, you got a hold of the blessing. You heard about healing. You heard about that that miracle. And man, I mean, you reached out and you got it. But the the earth is kind of like the turtle, the earthly. He just kind of takes a little while to get up to this deal. And I think that that sometimes we're a little bit guilty of getting a little bit down in the dump because we're having to wait patiently for the manifestation to take place. Maybe some of you have come up here and you've said, I want to be prayed for, Brother David. I want you to anoint me with oil. I want you to get a hold of it right now, that that blessing is yours the moment that God touched you, whenever you activated your faith. Don't you ever, don't you ever turn your back and say, it it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Yes, it did happen. Because by faith, you came and you asked, and and he said, what things whatever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. See, it's the waiting game that you you and I are prone to. The old devil loves it. He loves it whenever we just say, ah, it ain't mine. I must, I probably didn't have no faith or whatever. No, child of God, it's time that you, you come to this. Just like Samuel, he come over here and he anointed Brother David to be king over Israel. 20 years later, the manifestation took place. Listen to this. This is found in the book of Hebrews. Something similar, or maybe on a different level, but it's still the same thing. Verse 13 through 15. It's talking about Abraham. For when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself, saying, Surely, blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. You know what he's talking about? Abraham was childless as far as the promised child was concerned. Isaac, from the time that God told him you're going to have a son, 
with Sarah? You know how long it took? 25 years. But you know what? God changed Abram's name from Abram to Abraham. Meant father of a multitude. Father of many nations. You see, the thing I'm trying to help you to understand, child of God, is getting hold of what it means to wait patiently. We're learning from Samuel's experience that he fulfilled his mission. You're going to find out that God's going to send you out on missions many times. You say, I want you to go pray for this one. Or I want you to go do this. Or whatever it is that God directs you to do. The manifestation took place maybe years down the road. I've went and visited with people that many years it took God to bring them a place of salvation. But I visited with them years before. There's people that I have prayed for that I've asked God and said, God, I ask you to to bless them with your healing. And there have been times that I mean just like that. I mean the manifestation happened that quickly. You go throughout scriptures and you'll find that. That that's sometimes the way God moves as well. But on the other hand, I've seen people had this this blessing, this promise bestowed upon them, and the manifestation might have took some time down the road. I'm, all I'm trying to help you to see, child of God, is allow the blessing to come alive in your life. That you just walk along, just like Brother Abraham. Hey, you know what? God, you said you promised me this child. And every day he'd say, people say, who are you? He said, I'm Abraham. He says, people, I'm sure people snicker and laugh behind his back. <laughs> that old man. I mean, look at him. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know how old Abraham was when God promised him? He's 75 years old. You know how old he was when the child come? A hundred. Get you some of that for a miracle. The point is, is I'm trying to help you to understand that Father Abraham, he didn't give up on God. He just took God, God at his word. I'm asking you this morning. I want you to take God at his word. I want you to believe that God still blesses. He blesses people. And ladies and gentlemen, it's up to us then to just walk with that joy in our hearts. Say, oh, the glory to God. I just got my healing this morning. I got that miracle. Amen. And then other people say, oh, you don't look healed. I don't have to look nothing, ladies and gentlemen. All I got to do is say, I am. Amen. I come to that place where I start walking by faith. See, I'm not trying to be saved, ladies and gentlemen. I am saved. Amen. See, I don't argue with that. I know some people, they look at me and they might see some faults or flaws in my my this or that about me. But ladies and gentlemen, my my salvation is in Christ. See, that's why I can walk on this earth and have peace in my heart that whenever my time on this earth is done, I know where I'm going to spend eternity. How about you? Ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to get a hold of the reality that God is a good God and he, He sends forth His blessings. And whether the manifestation happens immediately or it takes some, some, some time down the road, don't you give up on God's blessing. I want you to get a hold of that. And say, yes, I have done what God has asked me to do, told me to do, and now I'm just, I'm just walking in the joy of the Lord saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your blessing. Amen. Amen. Don't, you, don't, you, don't you dare put on that, that spirit of heaviness. You put on a garment of praise, child of God. You walk out of this church, you say, thank you, Jesus, for your salvation. Thank you, Jesus, for your healing. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing. Whatever it may be. And you watch what will happen. See, I'm convinced that many times that's what God is looking for. Amen. He's looking for a people that keep walking by faith and not by that feeling. See, I'm asking you to get a hold of that faith thing. That you, just like David, Samuel says you're a king. Anointed him with oil. David went his way. Samuel went his way. And it took years for that to come to pass. Abraham, you're going to have a son by Sarah. And sure enough, 25 years later, it came to pass. And ladies and gentlemen, that in itself is a miracle because that woman was 90 years old. How many of you 90-year-old women like to be given birth, huh? Get some of that. Amen. You'd probably hit old Abraham over the head with a dough rolling pin, wouldn't you? Amen. Let's all stand, if we will, this morning. I want you to just just let your faith come alive in, in an awesome God. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to help you to see is, is God is a miracle-working God. He does wonderful things if we will just believe. I believe that David believed. He waited patiently upon the Lord. I mean, sometimes you're down in the miry pit and you just, I mean, you need God to pick you up. Just recognize, you know, 
Honor your faith this morning. Put it to work. If God leads you to an altar to pray, I pray that you'd come. Father, I am thankful this morning for this time together with my brothers and sisters in Christ. And Lord, as we've looked in the life of Samuel, we realize we can learn some things from him. That Lord, whenever he allowed his emotion of grief to hinder the ministry, you had to fire him back up. Lord, I know the emotions can sometimes really sideline us. And then, Lord, if there's somebody here this morning that they've been sidelined because of some, some emotion, whether it be grief or depression or anger or bitterness, God, may they come to these altars this morning and just ask for your help. And God, get up and, and get busy again. Get involved. Fulfill their, their destiny. Lord, I just pray this morning that if we've got somebody here that that knows in their heart that they've, they've not been walking in the Spirit as closely as they needed to be. They've just been uh, fooled left and right. I mean the old devil just been fooling them with making bad business decisions. Lord, getting involved with the wrong people. God, because we get, we get this misconception because we're not listening to God. But Lord, may we be mindful this morning. You can, you can operate in our hearts and minds with the gift of, of the Spirit. So, Lord, for those that need that word of knowledge, may they come and just let their heart be poured out to God and say, God, I need your, your direction concerning this matter or this person. Lord, maybe there's somebody here this morning that, that they know in their heart that that blessing that, that you bestowed upon them, that, Lord, it's still theirs. It's theirs. And all they got to do is serve notice to the powers of darkness that we're not going to give up on, on what God can do. We believe that our God is an awesome God and that He does the miraculous. He can raise us from, up from being a, a, a nobody and a, looking after a sheep to being a king. Lord, You can raise us up from being childish to being fruitful. God, I just know that You're a miracle working God and You pass on blessings to Your people. And all You're asking from us is to be people of faith and just keep on believing. So, Lord, maybe this morning there's somebody here that needs a breakthrough in, 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 in their, their, their blessing. So I'm asking you, Lord, just to re, renew their faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Right now the altars are open. If God puts it in your heart to come, would you come this morning? You know in your heart that you need a breakthrough on something, would you come and pray? Maybe you've let some old feeling kind of hinder you and sideline you. Would you come? come White as snow are you washed in the blood of the Lamb. Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be